<laughs> Big sheet metal hates this. <laughs> Click here to find out why. <laughs> Have you ever welded sheet metal on a car and dealt with crazy warpage with the panel? That's very common, especially with the body panels on these vehicles. Usually it's like 19 gauge, 18 gauge, even 20 gauge. So the issue is when you weld it, the heat causes expansion and then when it cools, it shrinks to a smaller surface area than it was originally. And that's what the warpage is that you're seeing. Now to eliminate that, today I'm going to show you my process to planish out this warpage. Um, Typically, I would use a TIG welder for this because a TIG welder affords you a more malleable weld. It's easier to work with. Now, if you only have a MIG welder, you can go to other videos on this channel to see how to do it with a MIG welder. This video is specifically for the TIG welder, and that's my preferential way of doing it. The basic tools that you'll need for this project are hammers and dollies, something to cut the metal, something to mark the metal, and something to sand the metal. And that's pretty much all you need, so let's get to it. Da -da 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 -da. So what I need to do is get these clamped flush. <laughs> I prefer to have no gap. The less filler rod you need to use, the less warp you're going to have, the less work afterwards. I know I'm working on a fab table, but I'm not gonna use the fab table clamps because obviously you can't use those on a vehicle if you're welding on the vehicle. So instead I'm going to be using vice grips as if I was using on a car. Um, typically I use these big long channel vice grips so you can reach up through a wheel well or whatever and clamp it. Um, yeah, you'll see. You'll all see. Just gonna go around and I'm gonna tack about every inch, give or take. When tacking your panel, make sure that the uh, panels are completely flush to each other. They step up a little bit. That's gonna really translate to a lot of warp afterwards. It's too much extra material there. Kinda trying to work it here to make sure everything's flush. So what I did there was I went through and I tacked every about half inch on the panel. This locks in the shape of the panel along with the keeping the two panels flush to each other. It's important that they're on the same plane. But what happens now is I attack them, a heat from the weld causes it to shrink. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a hammer and dolly, I'm gonna stretch these tacks back so the, hammer, so the panel is roughly flush and then we'll go through and we'll blast it with the TIG welder and we'll be ready for the next step. Look at that penetration. Mm. So now we went through and I've hammered and dollied all the tacks. That stretched it back to weigh roughly how it should be. It's not 100% perfect, that's okay, because we're gonna weld it anyway, so I'm not gonna waste my time on it. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the TIG welder, and I'm gonna weld one end straight across the other end. I'm gonna try not to stop, um, and I'm gonna do my best to make sure that I get good penetration and it's very consistent speed. Um, consistency is key when it comes to welding sheet metal. When you weld the panel and the weld shrinks, it's going to do crazy things to the panel. So if you jump around, it's gonna jump around even more and just do what's called oil canning. If you do one consistent bead, it's still gonna warp, yes, but as long as you travel fast enough and you're consistent, you can just do the exact same thing stretching it, it'll go right back to straight. So let's fire up the water and see what we can do. So now that we're finished welding this panel, uh, you can see what's known as the heat affected zone, which is like this bluish purple haze around the outside of the weld. 
Um, that shows how the heat like spread into the panel. Now you also notice, I didn't explain this earlier, but when I cut the panel, I cut a radius into the panel and so rather than doing a sharp 90 degree cut, that helps spread out this heat affected zone. Because if I had not done that and did a 90 degree, I would have paused a lot right there and had a, like a hotter spot that we would have popped out. In fact, over here where I had an issue when I was welding, you can see the, the heat affected zone spread a little bit more. It would have looked more like that in the corner and then would have needed more stretching to get back to where it needed to be. So what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna take the hammer and dolly. I'm gonna hit this panel through the weld from one end to the other consistently as best I can, just like we talked about before. And then we'll see if we get this panel to lay flat on the table. Say this is like a panel in the car and you're working on it. Um, you kind of read across the panel and you can kind of see like has it like curves in and out. Uh, so basically if it's too shrunk, it means there's not enough material in here to make it flat. So you can kind of see that it like, if it's a flat straight panel, it's a little hard to read because it ripples around, but say you had like a curve, it would look lower. Um, so it's like a curve like this way, it would look lower in. If it was a curve the other way, it would pop out. So it's kind of like a, a little bit of a guessing game, but once you do it over and over and over again, you'll be able to like learn how to chase these warps. Yep, looks pretty good. Uh, as you can see, I took it about 90% of the way there. Um, the panel itself, the, the problem is because the panel is not an actual frame panel on the car instead of the small square on the table. It's very hard to get it perfectly flat. I could spend a lot of time doing that and it's possible, but it's a lot of work. So instead, this is how far we're gonna take it. But as you can see, compared to the original panel, our, our uh, reference panel, it is significantly better. This is the process that works best for me. TIG welding it, hammer and dolly, Check for highs and lows, pretty much good to go. Um, because this is just a test piece, this is as far as I'm gonna take it, but what I would normally do is grind the tops of the welds flush to the panel, being careful not to actually grind the panel itself, just the weld, and then it would be good to go. But again, since this is just a test piece, this is as far as we're gonna take it, I think you guys get the idea. If you want to learn any more tips and tricks, make sure you subscribe to the Eastwood channel, and also if you wanna learn any more about the tooling we use today, visit eastwood.com. Later guys.